The idea for this talk started when somebody asked me if I could tell if my students were cheating with ChatGPT. The top two school districts in the nation, Los Angeles and New York, blocked ChatGPT from their networks. I have tools today to help me tell if my students are cheating with ChatGPT. So, should we ban ChatGPT from the classroom? Now, if you're watching this as a video, odds are that what I'm going to say about ChatGPT has already changed. But it keeps repeating itself over and over and over again with every new technology and for exactly the same reasons. So maybe we should address it exactly the same way. And it all starts with trust. But first, I have to take you back 22 years to June of 2001 in Helsinki, Finland, where in June, the sun goes down at night for only two hours. And I was with a group of geeks, <laughs> kind of just like me, and we were, for one of the first times in history, sharing an internet connection wirelessly with a technology called 802.11b. And we had three challenges. The first challenge was to make people stop calling it 802.11b and instead call it with a more descriptive name that we came up with, wireless fidelity, or in short, Wi-Fi. The second challenge was to make sure that they don't call it Wi-Fi. And the third challenge was that IT managers simply refused to let computers connect wireless to their networks. They wouldn't hear about it. Does that sound familiar? because we did exactly the same thing with calculators in the classroom. We did not allow calculators in the classroom. Can you imagine that today? Why does it happen? It happens for exactly the same reason you're not willing to sit in the back seat of a self-driving car when nobody is sitting at the front. You just don't trust it. And the reason you don't trust it is because you haven't spent enough time with it. And it's not going to matter if I told you that self-driving cars are 3.2 times safer than regular cars with human drivers. It's not going to matter. You haven't spent enough time with it, so you don't trust it. You haven't spent enough time with ChatGPT, and that's why you don't trust it. But the more time you're going to spend with it, the more time you're going to let students spend time with it, the more you're going to trust it. I guarantee it. But I heard one more thing. I was told, don't let students use ChatGPT, because if they do, they're not going to be able to think critically anymore. They're not going to be able to think. And I remember, I served on the board of a public school system. And uh, somebody came to me and said, you know, students don't know how to read an analog clock anymore. You need to teach them how to read an analog clock. And my answer was simple. Does the fact that they don't know how to read an analog clock means that they can't tell time? You know, uh, between kindergarten and 12th grade, students are going to spend 16,380 hours in the classroom. Should we take part of those precious hours and teach them how to read an analog clock? Or maybe use that time to teach them how to do a budget? Should we teach them the skills that they need when they have technology available to them, or teach them the skills that their great-great-grandparents needed when they did not have tools like this. See, I think that ChatGPT actually offers an opportunity in education. There is a learning model called Bloom's Taxonomy, and in the bottom layer is what we call knowledge. So if I tell you something and you can tell me that back, you mastered knowledge. ChatGPT can do that. Above knowledge, you have comprehension. Above that, you have application. When I teach my students the principles of entrepreneurship, I don't expect them to tell me what the principles are. I expect them to apply those principles, pr principles to their businesses, to their ideas. I want them to be able to analyze and to evaluate the credibility of the data sources that they use. And above all, I want them to be creative. I want them to create new ideas, new products, new services, new business models, new companies. Let ChatGPT do the bottom layer stuff, freeing their mind, freeing their time to think about the complexity of creativity up there at the top. 
But there is one more thing. It's the trust that I have in my students. See, trust is reciprocal. How many of you here have kids? Okay, not too many. Uh, how many of you know what kids look like? Okay, that's where, thank you for playing. Uh, this is what they look like. Uh, actually, this is my older daughter, Maya. Maya is 24 now, but this picture was taken when she was about a year old. And when she was a year old, this is when she realized that instead of crawling, she can lift herself and stand. And after she learned how to stand, the next thing she tried was walking. And once she mastered walking, what do you think was the next thing that she tried? Running, exactly, thank you. Uh, and the first time she tried running, what do you think happened to her? She fell down, precisely. Uh, you're, you're getting good at this. Uh, what do you think Maya did when she fell down? She started what? Crying, yeah, no, she didn't. What, she, what did she do? Got up, she got up, no, she didn't. The first thing that Maya did was she turned around and she looked at me. And if my reaction would have been... <gasps> She would start crying because obviously something terrible had just happened. But if my reaction would have been, get up, keep going, she would realize that maybe nothing significant had happened based on my reaction. She would get up and go. Trust works that way too. See, if I trust you and I show you that I trust you, you will behave in a trustworthy way. Because otherwise it's a terrible feeling knowing that somebody trusts you and you don't believe that you earn or deserve that trust. It's called cognitive dissonance. Unfortunately, it works the other way around too. Because if I don't trust you, and I show you that I don't trust you, you will behave in an untrustworthy way. I mean, what do you think will happen if I told my students that using ChatGPT is cheating? Did we all of a sudden run out of term paper meals where you can pay somebody to do your papers for you? Or if I give you a question in a quiz, you can't Google that question and find that somebody has done a Quizlet and the answer is right there? Hopefully you know these things. I'm, I'm not teaching you new ways how to cheat, right? I prefer to trust my students. This is what I tell my students in the first 10 minutes of the first class in the first week. I tell them that statistically, you have 91% probability of getting an A or an A- minus in my class. I've never given anything under than a B-. minus. I haven't given any of those in the last three, four years. Actually, I almost gave one last week, but I didn't. You will not fail my class. So stop worrying about the grade or how to cheat to get a better grade and start focusing on what you get out of this class. Oh, and by the way, use whatever shortcut you can to make your life easier. I promise you three reasons to trust your students with ChatGPT. Number one, don't let the fact that you don't trust a new technology, whether it's ChatGPT or anything else, stop you from trusting the students with that technology. Number two, ChatGPT creates an opportunity in education. It's an opportunity to trust your students at the higher layers of critical thinking. Let ChatGPT do the bottom layer stuff. And number three, if you trust your students to use ChatGPT or any other artificial technology tool in an ethical way, that's how they're going to use it. Don't trust them, and they won't. I want to leave you with one final thought. Our brain has 86 billion neurons. Not that we use all of them, and some of us use fewer than others. You know what I'm talking about. But that number is not changing. This year, Apple introduced the M2 Pro processor that has 40 billion transistors, which is about the equivalent of 6 billion neurons. That number has been growing 40% every year for the last 63 years. You know what that means? It means that if in eight years, in 2031, you're going to go and buy a computer, that computer is going to have as much brain power as your brain. And if you wait one year longer, that computer will have 40% more brain power than your brain. There are two questions. That computer is going to do exactly what we programmed it to do. Will we use it for the power of good? And will we let our students use it? 
It all starts with trust. Thank you.